Thanks for staying with us. Over now to maritime crimes. To tackle the challenge of maintaining vessels seized by the Nigerian Navy during operations on Nigeria's waterways, the Armed Forces Act is being reviewed by the House of Representatives to, among other things, empower the Navy with prosecution of maritime crimes, the smugglers and crude oil thieves. The Chairman of the House Committee on Navy, Right Honorable Yusuf Gakdi, disclosed this during a walk-in visit to the Central Naval Command Headquarters in Unigua. Members of the House of Representatives Committee on Navy on a visit to the Central Naval Command Headquarters in Yenugua by Yesu State. One of the aims of the visit is to keep the lawmakers up to date with issues affecting officers and ratings of the command. The chairman of the committee, Right Honorable Yusuf Gaji, is unhappy that officers spend a long time protecting seized vessels used for smuggling stolen crude before litigation. This is the reason for the decision to consider empowering the Navy to prosecute suspected oil thieves. The Air Force Act is expected to give Navy empowered to prosecute all maritime related offenses. That the issue of personal ships being packed for a very long period of time is going to be a thing of it. What Navy will need to do is only to strengthen its legal department so that they will have competent lawyers within the Nigerian Navy that will handle those. If you arrest a pirate, you have the right to take the pirates to court without waiting for the directive of the Ministry of Defense. All those bureaucratic opportunities will be addressed. The flag officer commanding Central Naval Command, Rear Admiral Kennedy Ibuchulam, is grateful to the committee for the visit. Thank you also for taking the time to enlighten us, telling us the much that you, who are superintending over the Nigerian Navy, the much that you are doing to see that the Navy makes progress. This is the second time the House Committee on Navy is visiting the command. There are expectations that the committee will engage the Chief of Naval Staff to seek ways of addressing issues relating to the survival of officers across all naval commands in Nigeria. Jesse, you see, Plus TV News, Yenagua. Moving on, leadership development contributes uh, greatly to the positive development of young people and their communities. Helping young people develop leadership competences make them better, able to solve community problems and enhance their civic participation. In this report, Nigerian youths have been asked to avail themselves with self-discovery and development to enable them position in leadership for a better uh, society without waiting for government. The score was made by the convener and speakers at the Future Leadership Conference 2021. 22 years since the return of democracy after the military regime handed power to civilian leaders, many question if leadership has improved. This is why these young people have been called to gather for a mind-engaging discussion on ways to contribute to their own quota for a better leadership. Being pessimistic and indulging in unending complaint about what we're presently going through in this nation, we're not caught it. What should bother us the most as a people is how we get the right model of leadership that will bring about the reality of a prosperous nation. If you want Nigeria to be better, you as an individual has to be better. We can't move this nation forward if all we care about is ourselves. The leadership conference was themed transformational leadership, an antidote for Nigerians' leadership quagmire, and a section of it was a debate on who are the problem, the leadership or the followers. We don't really have leaders. We only have dictators who tells us what to do. Leadership make provision for followers. If the followers become leaders rather than followers, we will not have issues in leadership. The issue is this, we have followers who are yet to become leaders, why are there still followers? 
The issue is not Buhari. The issue is me and you. Until you change, Buhari will not change. A one-time governorship candidate of Imo State, Dr. Linus Okori, while intending to balance the debate, opined that it is double tragedy for one who was not provided for, not to strive to provide for oneself. When you are broke, think for some time, and an idea will come up. And the idea is what will be a product or what? A service. And when you trade it in the marketplace, it exchanges for finance. Think, think, think. Once you see that there is something wrong anywhere and you take responsibility to ensure that that thing is fixed without waiting for somebody to come and lay hands on you, without waiting for somebody to come and endorse you, without waiting for somebody to come and give you a title, then that is leadership that you are displaying. I will never, I will never. Sell my votes. The thrust here is that true leadership is a personal responsibility that requires everyone not to wait for anybody in contributing to a better Nigeria. Young people have the energy, creativity and idealism to challenge entrenched patterns of exclusion and injustice to be at the forefront of global change and innovation. Still speaking of youths in leadership, some civil society organizations have stressed the need to target children and youths for reorientation and engagement in a more articulated way through civic education. They stated this during a two-day civic uh, education meeting for secondary school aged children in Port Harcourt, Rivers State Capital. The project coordinator of Oxfam in Nigeria Henry Ushe said the objectives of the two-day event include engendering responsibility by promoting transparency and accountability for public funds, as well as interest in governance. Also speaking, Executive Director of the Connected Development Code, Hamzat Lawal, said the event was imperative to start building the next generation of leaders and inculcate integrity in them. Yeah, to also look at how do we begin to catch young people, you know, as early as they can, as we can, to ensure that we begin to create consciousness and awareness and mobilize them such that they're able to look at all of these injustices and around them. We believe as civil society, we can work closely with government to enhance what they're doing and support the work that they're doing. But most importantly, ensure that the kind of investment that were needed in the next generation of leaders are properly uh, Utilize. So for us, we're bringing students that, are, that have inculcated leadership skills in them naturally. Speakers at the event said the ability of the government to engage young people will help in enhancing peace in the society. Meanwhile, some of the students said they learned how to embark on advocacy for transparency, integrity and honesty among others. Education is a key determinant of the emergence and sustainability of democracy because it promotes political participation at the individual level and fosters a collective sense of civic duty. Building community integrity is of utmost importance to everyone, both as a child and as an adult, because it is the only thing that can drive sustainable peace in our country. Today we're learning about integrity. I think integrity is the virtue, the virtue of being honest and free and fair in one way for society. And I think that teaching of the teachings of integrity is going to really help young people. The project tagged Power of Voices, Fair for Raw Project was established in six states in Nigeria, including Delta, Emo, Aquaibom, Cross River, River State, and the FCT. Providing leadership training prepares youths to manage time, work in a team setting, build individual self-esteem that promotes assertiveness along with self-awareness. And finally, on this edition of PLUS Report, the Director General of NAVDAC, Dr. Mojistola Adeye, has said that the Commission is in need of personnel to combat drug trafficking, eliminate substandard and falsified medicines in the country. Dr. Adeye said this during the agency's budget defense with the House of Representatives Committee on Health Services. China and India have been identified as countries responsible for the influx of fake and substandard drugs into Nigeria. This was the submission of the Director General of NAVDAC during the 2022 budget defense in Abuja. 
She blamed the removal of NAVDAC enforcement officers from the ports since 2011. According to her, emboldened drug lords have formed a watertight cabal to undermine security agencies at the ports to bring in fake drugs. From 2011 to 2018, May 16, 2018, NAVDAC was removed from the ports. And we were supposed to be controlling and regulating what is, imp what is imported or what is exported. Seven years and cabals were formed. Dr. Adeye also used the opportunity to request more personnel for the agency. She stated that as of today, it can only boast of just 2,118 personnel across the country, which is barely enough to please the entire country. Let's look at our porous borders. We are surrounded by six countries or five countries. And there is no guard in terms of regulation of the border. We need staff. We have 2,118 staff now. We need more staff at the borders. We don't have enough uh, men and women to guard our borders. Chairman of the committee, Honorable Tanku Sununu, taxed NAVDAC to conduct a nationwide market surveillance to track and confiscate these fake and substandard drugs before it destroys every fabric of the society. And when you have, as a body, you have the batch number, you have everything. So you cannot, based on your study, displace it from the market and make it declare it unfit for this thing. And then we can work for that, work for that sir. Ma, sorry, if we, if we have a multiple approach, the cabal you are saying will know that the country is ready to checkmate them. Adi assured that the agency had taken the war into countries like China and India, and the interface is yielding significant results. And that's all on this edition of Plus Report. Please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram, and just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obiugo. Thanks for watching.